This better work. Yeah, I hear you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Woo! There you go. There Whew. we go. That was tough. That was I'm sorry, sweetheart. I, but you were so low, I couldn't. I couldn't possibly talk to you without sounding like a. I'm an old timer. <laughs> <laughs> it's, totally it's totally fine. We just had a whole DJ party. I was playing. Um, we were going off with all your albums in preparation for what's about to happen tomorrow. Nice. Have a new single out called All Mine. Yes. How are, you feeling? are you excited? Am I excited? Oh my goodness. It's been a while. It's been about 14 years since I put out my own stuff. So I'm talking about excited. I mean, I'm ecstatic. But I feel positive. There's been a lot of great feedback from the snippets and the things I've been putting out there. My Riz Riders has been getting it in hard body, making sure everybody hear about it. And you know, just behind the scenes, a lot of the people that I have put, you know, presented the song to, they've been, man, I love this record. I'm going to pump it up to death. It's featuring my man, my brother, yeah. Johnny Gale. So at the end of the day, he did his thing on there. And it's just one of those songs that I feel like we got a good chance at, at, at really making some noise out here, you know? Definitely. Well, before we get into this and we talk about this, we're going to play a quick game, all right? Mm -hmm. And we're going to take you down memory lane, because like you said, it's been about 14, 15 years since you put out your own stuff. But we're about to go uh -huh. through five songs. I have five songs for you, or it might be it's uh -huh. five songs. And you have to tell me the first memory or maybe a sentence or a word that comes to mind when I say that song, okay? Okay. All right, we're going to throw it all the way back. And the first thing we're going to do is Candy Girl. What's the oh, first thing goodness. that comes to mind? Candy Girl, that's the kickoff. That's the one that started it all. So, you know, Candy Girl put me and the fellas on the map. Without that one, there would be no us, you know. Who yeah. knows what would what we where we would be right now without that Candy Girl. So I think of that, I think of Mari Starr, the man who put it together and helped put us out there. Awesome, awesome. All right, next one. If it isn't love. If it isn't love. Oh um, my that's the first song off the Heartbreak album. Which okay. Is the intro yeah, that's the album on um Johnny was introduced to the world as the newest new addition. So um that song to me was one of those jams that I couldn't wait. It was the first collaboration with New Edition and Jimmy Jam and Cherry Lewis. First time I got to work with those guys. And when I first heard that song in the studio, I just felt, oh, we we're right there. He's they've given us another one of those songs that they've been giving to like Janet Jackson and helping her hit hard. Alexander O'Neill helping him hit hard. When I heard that song, I was like, oh, we about to hit hard with this one right here. So, <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, that was that. Mm -hmm. And that song to this day, whenever it comes on, I'm I'm ready. You do the moves, right? You can't not do the moves. I'm yeah. <laughs> I, I love it. I'm I'm literally a member of New Edition when that song comes on. Me and my best, we we do it. So that's, that's what's up. That's right. Um, all right, that's next right. One, sensitivity. Sensitivity. Okay, now that's the one that broke me as a solo artist. That was my first release when I went out by myself for the first time, venturing out into the world as um, a solo artist. You know, and it was kind of scary because. All the rest of the members had already came out as mm -hmm. solo art. The world thought I was going to be out there as a solo artist first, being the lead singer. And everybody else not only was out there before me, but had huge records. Their mm -hmm. records were big and soaring up the charts. And so I'm sitting around like, what am I going to do? Yeah. I hope I'm not the only one that flop out here. So they got all those little butterflies. But Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis once again came through and gave me one of those number one smashes, man. So it was a good look. Platinum that was my, album. It's my Platinum favorite album. song. <laughs> yeah, that's my favorite song off the, uh, you know, as a solo artist so far. All right, next one. Do What I Gotta Do. Do What I Gotta Do. It's got to be one of the, I mean, the most beautiful breakup songs that ever hit the planet. Yeah. A song for, break, you know, it was it was done so touchingly and so warm that I don't think a lot of people realize that I was, you know, breaking up. Yeah. You know? <laughs> It was one of them type of records, but overall, you know, it's it was it was true to what was going on during that time frame. They were like Jimmy Jam and True and Terry Lewis and True Fashion. They write about what your life is. You know, mm -hmm. they take kind of take stories and parts of your life and put the put it into the music and song. And that was one of those records that was really what was going on at the time. Yeah, that's like the one song. That's one of the songs that's like on my track list of like, you know, when I'm broken hearted, I'm going through it. 
And that's the songs that I got to put on there. You know, you got to make yourself sad. So you got to listen to that sad oh, music. Goodness. So that's, that's you what I'm saw. Yeah, listen, you should have <laughs> saw all the dedications going around that year when that came out. It's like, oh, I'm going to send this to this. No, he ain't. <laughs> Blase, Blase, Ski. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. All right, last one. All Mine. Mm -hmm. Which one? All Mine. <sighs> all Mine is grown and sexy. That's oh. RT at a... At his height, you know, growing, growing up, and I think it's one. Like I said, I think I put out a, a press statement saying it's a, it's a statement record that you know when, you know, first of all, love music is not saturated like it used to be, and it's like when it's done right to me, there's always a place in the music industry for love, you know, that topic for that subject to be addressed, and I think we hit one with that one. The That's song came about actually it was supposed to be for Johnny. Oh, that was submitted. Yeah, it was submitted to Johnny for a song uh, for his album. Yeah. And when he heard it, he said, man, it sounds like my brother. He said, and then he called me up and said, man, I got a song I want you to hear. So I listened to it. When I heard it, I was like, uh-oh. Okay, I think you might have something in your hands here. So I went over to his house. Uh, he had, where his studio was at his home studio. And spent about three or four hours on it. Yeah. Came out of there. The next thing I know, I heard his vocals on it. I said, okay, here we go. We might have that that mixture of can you stand what can you stand the rain mm -hmm. taught us and the group and taught the world that the combination of Johnny and our and our voice voices kind of blend right when you do it when you do it the right way the contrast of them two voices work well with each other and so yeah. um we want to continue that magic right there yeah know? I'm excited because you guys released perfect last year so this is yeah. highly anticipated um and we're ready for it and and Corona tried to mess us up all right Corona it did. done put a delay on everything. It's supposed to, it's supposed yeah, to be it did. a while. So now we've been waiting for this. Um, but tell me how that yeah. feeling is because now, you know, Corona's done messed you up a little bit with releasing the album. But what can we expect from this album after 15, 14, a long time since we last the heard it? The album itself, I'm still cutting it. But it's just one of those things I just wanted to speak reality. I wanted to be it's the story, my story. I wanted to... I, the idea of it was to not try to per se go in and just find hits mm -hmm. because it's a hit and sing it because we think that it could win. But I want to actually address what's popping in the world, which I've been doing. You yeah. know, the last two years I've been writing songs just in that same realm without before all of the corona, before all of the police brutality stuff just kind of escalated where it did now. It just told me I was already ahead of the game because... I have that thing where I want to address some make me want to hollers and inner city blues like Marvin Gaye was doing it in his time. Mercy, mercy, me's. You no, know, there's a few things like that I want to make sure I can just be that voice um, in that same kind of way. It was very positive and very innocent the way that he addressed it, and but true, yeah. very true and factual, and had um, allowed that voice to be heard. You know that can't be heard without you know in the areas that, that all of the stuff is happening in. So I want to be a part of that. And also just a lot of true to me, just love songs, sweet stuff. I want to talk to the ladies. I want to make sure that that bedroom is on fire when the <laughs> couples get together, you know. So for me, that's where I got to go with this one. And just some collabos, got some ideas for some people I would like to work with. Hopefully they want to work with me. Yeah. Uh, I've talked to some of them and it looks like it's, a, it's promising. So at the end of the day, just a great album full of good music, you know, it was in a time period with that's hard to find, and you know, for our age bracket, it's like, how do you find a record that I can just put on and just let it go? Mm -hmm. I want to put one of those together. So hopefully that happens. Definitely. Can you just talk to me just maybe, like just you being in the industry for so long um, and, you know, having this career with all these fans still supporting you, but what would you say is one of the biggest challenges of creating music from when you first came out to now in 2020? Um... The biggest challenge, I guess, especially for being around as long as I have, is to get people to take it serious, to want to put you out like they're still laying for you, you know. Um, distribution companies are looking for the younger, new thing that's coming up, you know. They want to stick with something that they see currently selling millions of records or what have you. So for me, the challenge is that. Yeah. It's also, um, there's a big challenge of trying to be what we would consider relevant mm -hmm. and current, but not lose what you stand for, the mm -hmm. integrity and the type of music that I do, and then what I like to uh, represent and how I sing and the type of songs I do. You don't want to go too far from that, but you still are trying to be relevant 
without looking like I'm trying to be a youngster, trying to be what, you know, what the kids are doing. Yeah. And that, that I can't do that. Um, so finding that blend between um, now and then so we can find something that can still work and be, you know, be liked and loved still. Yeah, staying true to who you were and where you came from, um, but still Absolutely. being able to, to have the music that people are playing. But I don't Absolutely. think it's going to be an issue because I'm seeing people in here, like everyone's like, we're waiting, we're anticipating this. So yes, I'm excited yeah. for this. Um, and well, I, I you, have, you have radio interviews to get to, but there's a few more questions that I want to I wanna make sure that I ask. Um, Go ahead. Uh, one major question is, in 2016, you had this mini series that broke records, okay? It, I mm -hmm. mean, the fans that you were able to get from there, my little cousins are born in mm -hmm. 2000s and now they're new edition fans. I tell you, we're at college parties. Your music is coming. The, I tell you, songs come on. We're doing the dances. And then you, of course, you have your real writers that have been, been around for forever. Um, what do you think was probably, uh, what was one of the hardest things, I guess, um, in order to put a mini series together and to make a mini series about your life? The hardest thing was being truthful putting your business out there in a way that, um, you know, I just, you wanted to be, you wanted to be honest, you wanted yeah. to be real, but you don't want to shock people to where they like, well, now I don't know what that, what is that? So one of those was that getting the right budget, you know, making sure that you can put it together with the type of quality mm -hmm. that we felt like it deserved, you know, and not be just slapped together because we're trying to do a story, mm -hmm. but really have somebody take it serious, get the right producer, director, and the right budget to be able to bring in the right team and actors. I think that's, that's, that was one of the major challenges. And the actual story, the way it was being done with the people that was ended up being done with was probably 15 years in the making. Yeah. You know, we had been talking to them for a while. And then off and on, we'd have to leave that subject and go back on tour. You know, a lot of things happened in between. But we ended up back with that same team. And they had they had it put together. Our, our biggest fear was that it would come off like, you know, it's like some of them lifetime stories were coming off mm -hmm. during that time frame where they kind of ruined our sister, sister story. Whitney, they ruined Leah's story. There was a few things that was going down like that. And we just like, we didn't want to sit in that book. So we knew w one of the biggest things that we had on our side is that everyone that um, in the group was still alive. We were still here to help tell the story, put their input into it, oversee it in a way that we can make sure that. Um, it was done right. Everybody's characters, everybody's story, and what they knew was the core thing. You can't say, can't tell everything in that amount of time. Yeah, it's hard to put thirty something plus years Whew. into th three days. But you know, we did the best we could, and 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 America and across the world spoke. You know, our fans spoke. It's like, yo, we like it, we love it. So, Hands down, we're Hands happy. One of the best series <laughs> of all time. I've watched it when it first came out in 2016. I watched it three times before it was even released because I work in press. But then after uh, I was putting it on to all my friends, I watched it so many times. Like, I'm thinking about that wing that wasn't left for you. I saw that in the comments. I'm thinking about different things in the film. Solid. Um, and I just... Good looking now. Y'all really set that. Y'all set the bar high. I think... I mean, I, I can't even think of a better miniseries. Just the fact that you guys are all involved in it. I just think it was it was just phenomenal. So... Thank yeah, you. Appreciate you for that. You're so sweet. Thank you, baby girl. I appreciate that. Yo, we tried hard, so I'm glad you liked it. Yeah. Really. Was there anything in the story, or was there anything when you got the script that you didn't know when you read over the script? Um, not really. Okay. Most of it, I most of it I knew. Okay. You know, most of that stuff was new. I know the part that I put in there, the yeah. fellas didn't know. I had never had that conversation with anybody. I never told them that Mari Star and Streetwise and them kind of backtracked behind everybody he was trying to just sign me. I just kept that to myself as something that didn't need to be said. I just felt that as a young boy, like, why bring that up? You know, it's about me and the fellas. You know, I like doing it the way I'm doing it, the choreography and all that stuff. So I think it was more of, of that. When I looked at the story, everything else in, in there was, I kind of knew already okay. most of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I did see that in interviews. Everyone was like, they didn't know that. They had to have that conversation with you. They're like, wow, like you, that was, you were selfless then when you were a child. Anyone would yeah, been. man. Blame it on my mama. Blame <laughs> it on my mama. I was being a fool. I could have went out there and made all the money by myself. <laughs> it's fine. You made the right decision. You made the right decision. Now we get to experience yeah. you and, and really celebrate you and your solo career. So I think that that's all that really gets to, that's all that really matters. 
absolutely nothing else matters it was beautiful man I, I wouldn't change a thing the way the whole everything unfolded with everyone being able to have the opportunity to go out there and and share their gift as individuals and as a group it all works in god's timing and the way it's supposed to go so for me uh my contribution was just being the lead singer yeah being that loyal cat that can always make that look come off so that you don't have to go out there without it you know so when it's time to go out there and do a new edition I was right there. I wasn't busy hosting a television show that I started or doing something else that would have took up my life or my time for a few, five, six years or whatever. But I let myself be, I do just enough things so that when it, it came time to do addition, I always had room for it. Definitely, definitely. And so one thing that also, you know, I've been thinking, we see in the comments is, have you been able to catch any of these verses? Any of the what? The verses challenge, uh, the verses with Swiss Beats and Timbaland. I heard them. Yeah, I've seen a couple of them. Yeah. What has been your favorite one so far that you've seen? I know Teddy Riley and Babyface, Erica Badu and Jill Scott. I don't know, man. You know, there's been so that was a nice one though. Yeah. The Erica Badu and Jill Scott, because those are two of my favorite artists. And wow. when I saw them getting it in, you know, it's just so much fun when you see them. All of them is just fun to watch. But I would have to say that probably is one of my favorites that you okay. brought that up. Yeah. Erica, yeah, Jill. That that was one of my favorites. Would you consider yeah. doing one? Why not? You know, that's what's happening right now. You know, we got to see what's popping. Who who want to battle? Who want to get it in? Yeah. I know somebody came at me. Is not that was probably something was early and was talking about if Swiss came to us to do us versus uh, the new kids on the block, would I be in? And I was like, man, I don't know, man. Those are my friends. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't know, man. That might be... That might be brutal afterwards, but yeah, that, at the end of the day, all of that stuff is fun, so why not? I would love to do it if it comes around and makes sense, you know, even as myself or New Edition, we'll figure it out. There's a lot of things that we're working on now internally to make sure that we can start participating in some of this stuff now, get back on the scene, even as a team, but until then, it's all mine, baby. Yeah, all <laughs> mine, so all mine, and, that, and that's such a great segue, all mine, it comes out tomorrow. I'm seeing people in the comments. I'm seeing someone literally, my cousin said in here, she said, Ralph, I have the record collection. Can you sign it? I see people saying All right. they still have everything from it. They're so excited for this. Um, and so it's going to be streaming on all platforms. Are you going to be working on a video? What else can we expect from the this? The video's done. We shot it already. We shot it about two days ago. So we were looking at the, should see some rough, rough footage of it today so I can kind of edit it and see what scenes make sense of, you know, just get that final cut going. But it's done. We're going to drop all this simultaneously. With the perfect video, we was kind of behind the ball. Came out at least two months after the video, after the song had already been doing this thing, maybe even longer. So with this one, the intention was to jump right on it so we can have the visual working with the audio at the same time. So both are moving, helping to, um, you know, get that presence out there. It's been too long. I got to I gotta come out here on with swinging with all both hands. I can't be playing right now. I got these things swinging. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> right. right now, is it possible for you to give us any more snippets or maybe a little uh, allude to the All Mine? Maybe give us a, a tiny little, a, a little sample of the song before you go. The way it goes crazy, how you running through my mind, yet yeah. 24-7 all the time. My number one never on the side, yet yeah. mm. just you and I, you and I. No, I don't need to tell you, I'm going to show you. See, you're going to feel it when I hold you. Mm. So get ready, I'ma go there. Yeah, I'ma go there. Mm. Yeah, oh, nah, that's it, man. Y'all gotta hear the record. It'll be out tomorrow. Y'all be able to feel it. I need the music so y'all can really get into it. You no, know what I'm saying? But, that was, but I, that's where we at. I've done completed a lot of people's childhood dreams. Y'all, he was singing directly to you. I mean, I felt that. So I just appreciate <laughs> you for taking this time. To, I love it. To reveal it. Ralph, I want to just thank you so much just for your career um, and just for everything that you have done, continuing to release music, continuing to show us that you can be selfless in this industry. We're so thankful for you. We're thankful for the original music. Um, and we can't wait for this song. To I appreciate that. was so heartfelt. Thank you, sweetheart. I appreciate you, too. Allow me to come on here and let everybody know my song's coming out. And check it out, y'all. I think y'all going to dig it. Riders, mount up. We about to get busy. <laughs> All streaming <laughs> platforms, so make sure you guys go out and support. And thank you for doing this live with me. We did it. We were able we to get did it that. Up. And you heard That's it. right. I'm new to this. I haven't even done one on my own Instagram. I've never done this yet. So I got to get, I got to catch up, man. It's yeah. all good. I'll 
Okay, well, I learned I'm today. Honored. I'm honored to have been your first live with Nio. Thank you so much, Miss Campbell. I love you and I appreciate it. And keep doing what you do too, sweetheart. Thank you. I appreciate you. Have a good day. You too, baby. All right. Bye. Bye. All right, y'all. So that was an exclusive, exclusive interview with the one and only Ralph Tresvant, y'all. Y'all can go and support the new song, All Mine, tomorrow. The new album will be out very, very soon. It's pending. It's coming out. But y'all, make sure you guys keep doing what you're doing and loving on him and supporting all that he does. And yes, this has been an exclusive interview with Meet the People. I will see you guys back next week with more interviews. Okay, bye.